Hi, welcome back to uh, SFU Spring 2020 Math uh, 152. Uh, I will be uh, talking today about Section 11.7 uh, Strategies for Testing Series. It's uh, Brenda Davison here. There is nothing new in this section. This is sort of a review section that uh, where we're going to discuss the basic tactics we've seen for testing for series convergence and then look at a whole bunch of examples. So all of these, uh, all of these uh, tests that I will discuss, you have seen before in the previous lectures, and you've seen some examples of it. I think uh, that uh, these questions in this lecture are an excellent opportunity for you to practice. Uh, most of the questions that uh, we're going to look at, in fact, probably all of them, are coming from previous uh, final exams. I'm going to go through many of them. Some of the other ones, I'm just going to indicate which type of test you should use, but uh, my advice to you would be to perhaps listen to the first 10 minutes of this lecture however long it takes me to sort of summarize what's going on and then when you see me start to do an example stop the video try the question yourself and then uh, take a look at how i uh, how i did it and that will do one of two things one if you if you didn't see how to do it you'll get some hint you'll you'll see how to do it but also you might do it a different way and then recognize oh hey there's a second way of doing it of course they if, if both are correct then then you'll reach the same conclusion so it's a uh, this lecture should be taken not a, as a lecture per se but more as a, a review uh, for what we've been doing and an opportunity to do a lot of practice so uh, hi highly strongly uh, recommend that approach so we're, the thing that we're doing right now is uh, we're, we're, we're showing you all these different series and the the main thing that we've been asking it's always important to keep the main thing the main thing is to ask, uh, at least the main thing that we're asking right now is, is the series, is the infinite series convergent or divergent? I think actually for myself personally, a, 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 another interesting question is to ask to what number does the series converge? Should it be convergent? So let me just give you an example that I particularly like. Uh, this, this example here n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. So this is the sum of the reciprocals of the squares. So that would be 1 uh, plus 1 over uh, 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus dot dot dot, keeping going like that. Uh, this uh, clearly a convergent series. You can see that uh, p series test with uh, p uh, greater than 1, for example, or you could use an integral test as well. It, and uh, so that 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 portion is not so not so hard to to do but then to say well so we know it converges so it, it, there must be some number what number is that and in this case that number is uh, pi squared over six uh, that was uh, actually uh, a problem that was fairly difficult for uh, people to figure out it didn't come immediately and it, it has a name it's the basel problem and it was uh, and it was a uh, euler who um, who managed to uh, figure that out and he did that actually interestingly you may not see it from looking at this i surely didn't uh, until i saw the proof but you can one way of, of getting at this number is to actually use the zeros of the sine function uh, interesting because uh, well you don't see any any hint of the trigonometric functions when you look at the square numbers like that pi showing up yet again so that's uh, that's something. Uh, just these are sort of uh, just uh, additional uh, things of interest. I know uh, uh, particularly in the D300 uh, section of this class, there's been a lot of interest in uh, seeing uh, how you get these different numbers out of these uh, series. Uh, another one, just again out of interest, uh, we, which in fact we don't know how to handle in in uh, this course, and we won't in fact even at the conclusion of all of our lectures about series convergence. But just a uh, just uh, something of interest that would be this one here. What if I were to take a sum um, over all of the uh, prime numbers. So I'm going to say here p, p prime, like that, p prime. So what I mean by this, uh, 1 over p, what I mean is let's take all of the prime numbers, 2 is prime, 3 is prime, and let's add the reciprocals of them. 5 is prime, 4 is missing because 4 is not prime, 6 is not prime, 7 is prime, 8 is not prime, 9 is not prime, 10 is not prime, 11 is prime, 13 is prime, 
et cetera. And let's add all those things together and ask what happens. None of the tests that uh, we have talked about uh, and we are going to talk about and review in this lecture will answer that question for you. And uh, it's not obvious to get intuition on what's happening here because we know, for example, that the harmonic series diverges. So we, we, we would maybe think to look at something like this. And uh, we know that this diverges. This is a really important one. Uh, you must you must know that this whoops that the harmonic series diverges. Okay, so that diverges. That's the harmonic series. Okay, so we have uh, the harmonic series diverging. That's when we've got basically all of the integers here, and then we've got this one converging where we've got this the square ones here. And so what happens if we have some of these? Um, integers here, but not all of them. And also the prime numbers get you know much sparser as you as you go along. So there's sort of in some sense less and less and less. Uh, so what happens? This uh, I think are a really interesting question, and I will simply for you state the result that this also diverges. Much much more difficult to see that. Um, perhaps uh, if uh, somebody shows some interest and sends me an email, I can send you a nice proof uh, of that fact. All right, uh, let's take a look then at our main issue here in Math 152. Does a series, infinite series, converge or does it diverge? So we have uh, a, a variety of tests uh, uh, for this. Let us just go through them here. We have the test for our divergence. And that test for divergence is basically telling us if the terms don't go to zero, then you're done for. The series diverges. Okay, let us be very careful though. We, the, 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 the converse is not true. So if a of n goes to zero, like the terms go to zero, you can say nothing about convergence. Okay, we, we, we in fact uh, have examples of that right here. In all three of the series I've listed here, the terms go to zero. a n goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And uh, uh, one of them converges and two of them diverges. So please be very careful. It is, it is. I, I'm just going to reiterate the test for a divergence down here. It is true that if a n does not go to zero, then uh, maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll even write that. Then the sum of a n diverges. Okay, because you can imagine what happens. I mean, if you if you you're in a situation where you have some some situation of, of, of numbers and it, it, you know, they, they, they go on to something that is not zero. I mean, when you keep adding up a whole bunch of things that are not zero, then they never get to zero. It's, it's definitely going to diverge. But please be very careful. It is easy to make this mistake here. And uh, we've got uh, um, some examples there at the side. Okay, so that's our test for our divergence. And then uh, if we have such that the terms of the in the infinite series are positive. We have a whole series of, uh, uh, of tests that we could use. Uh, we can, it's a geometric series, uh, uh, P-series. Uh, we can do the telescoping series. That one's sometimes a little bit difficult to set up. There's the uh, integral test. Uh, there's a comparison test. There's the limit comparison test. Okay. That's for positive values uh, in our infinite series. If uh, the, the values in our infinite series are alternating a sign, that should be a major clue right away to take a look at the alternating series test. That usually works quite effectively whenever you see an alternating series. Okay, if we have a situation where a n is any real number, um, by that, what am I, what, what are we meaning here? We, we're meaning some terms are positive and some are negative, but it's not alternating. Uh, then we, uh, what, what, what can we do at that point? We could check for absolute convergence because if we have absolute convergence, then if some of the terms are negative, we will also have uh, convergence. So we would then uh, try the root test or the ratio test. Well, that's a, a summary of the uh, different tests that we have. And I would highly encourage you to 
learn them all. But it's, it's much, much better to have a wide range of tools and then pick the best tool uh, for the job at hand rather than learning one tool and hoping to clobber every problem with that one tool. So um, try as best you can to get all of the uh, tests down and get some feel for when one test is better than the other. Okay, 10 minutes as promised. We've kind of had a bit of an overview. And now what I'm going to do is just a whole bunch of examples. I'm going to do many more of them than I would probably had I been doing this in the classroom because I don't have to worry about uh, running out of time. On the other hand, I'm also not getting any uh, feedback about which ones are difficult or which things are not clear. So I'm I'm going to reiterate that I think the best thing for you to do is you can see the questions here. Maybe uh, try, for example, part A, 1, 2, and 3. Just right now, stop the video, try those three, turn the video back on, uh, and uh, then review over uh, what's discussed about them. Similarly, like that for the next, uh, you know, 3B, do those four and like that. And, and then there's going to be some of them where I'm not going to go through them all in detail. I'm simply going to uh, indicate to you uh, the answer and uh, which type of test to use. And so then you can still practice, but there won't be quite as much detail to refer back to. Okay. My uh, my view here is that when you take a look at an infinite series and you're wondering, hmm, does it converge or does it diverge, you should, uh, in a sense, I, I don't want to know if I use the word guess, but you should uh, take a look at it and think to yourself, hmm, what does it look like? Does it look like it's probably converging or diverging? And get some feel. Uh, sort of commit yourself to that. Maybe write down on your piece of paper your, before you start, hmm, looks like it converges. Because that might uh, lead you to picking one particular test over another or going about it in one way uh, different from another. And then when you see if you're right or not, then you get uh, you, you build up better intuition about what's going on. Okay, so I'm looking at this one here, n times the sine of 1 over n. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, if sine of 1 over n, really, that it doesn't matter what n is. The sine function here will keep this part here between 1 and minus 1. And then I see n getting extremely large and I'm thinking I'm, I'm dubious that this thing is going to uh, converge so I'm, I'm thinking off the right off the top a little bit of analysis probably diverges so let us then do that a little bit more formally and see if that analysis is correct so a n is n times the sine of 1 over n that's how we that's how we're describing the terms of this infinite series so I'm going to see what happens as n goes to infinity on this. So as I want to see, do the terms actually go to zero? Because if if not, then I can just uh, employ the uh, test for divergence and I'm finished. I'm already thinking that's unlikely because of that n sitting there. So immediately it's occurring to me, try to show it diverges. Looks like the terms are not getting small. Let's invoke the test for divergence. So I'll, I'll, I will go ahead and uh, uh, take that limit. I will take the limit as n goes to infinity of n sine 1 over n. And I see that this, in some ways, when I'm looking at that, I see, well, OK, this thing gets really large. Uh, and what happens here? I get the sine of, or uh, what do I get? I get uh, uh, the uh, sine of 1 over n. And that, this thing here, 1 over n it becomes uh, close to zero, sine of zero is zero. So I sort of see this thing is getting very large and this thing getting very small. And so I see this as this form of, in, this type of indeterminate form. So uh, I'm, I'm wanting to use L'Hopital's rule and to be strictly honest about that, I, what I want to do is make, it, I want to use x instead of n. Like I want to say, okay, now let me just consider this function f of x equals x times sine of 1 over x because I can't really take I cannot take the derivative unless I've got a continuous function so now I'm going to uh, um, either do it that way or I could say here consider uh, n to be in R either way is fine I just want to indicate that I understand that up until this point n is just an integer and then for my analysis here I want to move and into being in the real numbers, or I want to replace what I'm looking about with with, uh, with a continuous variable x. Either way is fine. Okay, and then I I'm I'm will rewrite this. I'm thinking I'm I'm going to want to use uh, L'Hopital's rule, so I'm going to rewrite this. The limit as n goes to infinity of 
sine 1 over n over 1 over n. Then I have one of the two indeterminate forms I can use L'Hopital's uh, rule on. I, in this case, I have the 0 over 0. The other one would be infinity over infinity. So then I simply take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, and I get this, the limit as n goes to infinity. And I take the derivative of the uh, numerator, and that is uh, cosine 1 over n times the derivative of 1 over n, which is minus 1 over n squared, divided by the derivative in the bottom, which is minus 1 over n squared. And then I do I simplify and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, cosine of 0 is 1. So I see that, in fact, the limit as n uh, goes to infinity of sine n, sorry, n times sine of 1 over n, in fact, is equal to 1. That is not 0. Therefore, it diverges by the test for divergence. Okay. This is not equal to 0. This diverges by the test for divergence. OK. First question. OK. I look at the next question. Uh, uh, infinite series uh, 1 over 2 to the n plus sine n. I'm trying to get a feel right away. Do I think this is probably going to converge or do I think it's going to diverge? I think to myself that little sine n is, uh, you know, again, just varying between minus 1 and 1. And then so I think to myself, OK, that's not really that much importance when n is large. So it look, basically looks like 1 over 2 to the n. I know that that uh, uh, converges, so I'm guessing right off the top that this thing converges. OK, so let us then formalize that. What, what was that thought process? I, well, for example, I see a n greater than or equal to zero, and then I notice that the sine of n is for sure between one and minus one. So I'm thinking that it's probably not much uh, of an impact. And then I'm thinking this probably converges. So I am now at this point looking for something bigger that converges. Remember to make the comparison in the right in the right way. So looking for something bigger that converges. So if I can find something bigger than this that converges, then clearly then this thing is smaller and then it will also converge. It's gonna make this a little bit larger. Okay, so what would uh, I think the obvious choice here would be uh, looking for something bigger that converges? That would be uh, one over. Uh, 2 to the n plus sine n. What is that going to be less than or equal uh, to? That's going to be less than or equal to uh, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so I make the denominator smaller. That makes the fraction bigger. And then I take a look at this infinite series, and that's going to be this thing here, the sum uh, 2 times the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. And that converges, uh, it's a geometric series, with r equals a half. So this converges geometric series r equals a half. So then uh, I've, I'm, I'm done. So it's a good converges by the comparison test. Put that, I'm going to put that here. So therefore, converges uh, by the comparison test. OK, done. Next one. I'm looking at uh, uh, it uh, right off the top. The first thing I, I notice when I look at it, I see it. Right, I look at that right away. I see, obviously, it's alternating. Uh, so then the next thing that occurs to me is, do the terms go to 0? OK, then I am like, OK, it's alternating. The terms go to 0. Uh, a few things to check, but I'm, I'm guessing that this is probably going to converge. So let us use that uh, information and, and uh, see if that's correct. So first thing to note, alternating. 
alternating. And then we then we're taking a look uh, limit as uh, n goes to infinity of the absolute value of this thing. So I'm, I'm wondering what that is. That is going to be, well, I mean, it, it's one in the numerator and the denominator gets infinitely large. So that is uh, clearly equal to zero. So the terms go to zero and they're, and they're alternating. So then I have to ask myself, is, is the n plus first term smaller than the nth term? So then I ask myself that question, is one over n plus one log the square root of n plus one less than or equal to one over n log square root n? Answer, yes. Uh, yes, why? Because uh, uh, well, n plus one is bigger than n and uh, log the square root n is a strictly increasing uh, function. So I mean, both of these, uh, this one here is bigger than this one, and this one here is bigger than this one. So the reciprocal of the product is is smaller. I'm done. Yes, so then this converges by the alternating series test. Converges by uh, the alternating series test. Okay. There it is there. All right, we 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 proceed. Next question, summer 2002, alternating series. Alternating series. Uh do the terms go to 0? 1 the limit well, let me write it this way. So the next thing that's in my head is do the terms go to zero? So I'm thinking the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n squared plus one. That's zero. The terms go to zero. It's alternating. Then I ask myself, it is, is one over n plus one squared plus one less than or equal to one over n squared plus one? And I mean, I can pretty much say yes right then but maybe I want to be a little bit more uh, rigorous I would I could reciprocate both sides I'm, I'm asking that my question so that would be the equivalent that would be the same as if remember if I reciprocate both sides the inequality changes uh, sides uh, uh, changes a uh, direction and I go like that and then I can square this n squared plus 2 n plus 1 plus 1 greater than or equal to n squared plus 1 I can remove this from uh, uh, both sides, and I see that uh, uh, 2n, whoops, 2n plus 2 is uh, greater than or equal to uh, 2n plus 2, greater than or equal to 1. That's clearly true. Uh, 2n greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that converges by the alternating series test. Done. There we go. The next one. Another one, alternating series test. Same exact mechanism. Uh, so we have uh, same exact mechanism, alternating series. Uh, uh, terms go to zero. Log is an increasing function. So log of n plus one over log of n plus one is less than or equal to uh, one over log n. So I mean here, I, the, the only thing to note different from the previous two examples of this log n a strictly increasing function okay that tells us that one over the log of n plus one is less than or equal to one over the log of n okay so it's alternating the terms go to zero we have that a n plus one is less than or equal to a n we're done alternating series test so this uh, also uh, converges well that's several examples in a row of using the alternating series test uh, here's a, another alternating series when I look at this one I, I 
I probably could, uh, uh, without difficulty, employ the al alternating series test. It does not look hard to do that. But just, just because uh, we've just done that several times, let us uh, instead uh, look at this and uh, and uh, do a different method. So I'm going to say, okay, so I see it's an alternating series, but also I see that this is growing very, very quickly in the denominator. So I take a look at the the sum as n goes to from 1 to infinity. I take the absolute value like that, and I get this thing here. And I see that the uh, that, that is convergent because uh, we have a geometric series. So this converges geometric series. Geometric series with uh, r equal to one third, which is clearly less than one. So uh, it's absolutely convergent. And uh, that means, of course, that it's convergent. So that's that's another way of looking at that one. OK, next one here, uh, summer. Uh, 2002, uh, n factorial squared divided by 2n all factorial. Okay. Actually, just before I uh, do that example, let me uh, point out that this thing here sums up to minus 1 quarter, just out of interest. And I actually, in fact, had the number here on, on this one here. This one comes out to be approximately minus 0. Point Three six three nine. So there's there there we've we have numbers uh, with the ones that well with all the ones that converge there is a number. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. I see the I see the factorials, uh, and uh, this one's not so not so easy for me to see because there's factorials in the numerator and there's factorials in the denominator, and then maybe one of the things that I might think off the top is how do I handle two n factorial? And uh, let us be careful uh, to make note right off the top that, uh, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, hmm, is 2n factorial equal to 2 factorial times n factorial? Uh, because that would obviously lead to uh, cancellation, etc. So be careful, this is not true. No, no. Let us uh, just uh, demonstrate that with a, a counter example. I'm going to simply try. Uh, n equals three, and I'll, I will get I would get this for example two uh, n factorial uh, would look like that, which would be six factorial six times five times four times three times two times one, and then if I were to look at what is two factorial times three factorial, I would see that is two that is two factorial two times one, and then I would multiply that by three factorial, which is three times two times one, looking like that. Okay, so these this this is the same, but uh, this is much much larger uh, than this. So not only have I sort of checked uh, myself to see at least uh, get some intuition if, whether that is the case or not. So if ever that's happening to you, think to yourself, hmm, I, I don't know, does that factorial distribute in? I haven't thought about that before, or I can't remember from the last time I did it. Then you know, just try a few examples and see what's happening. Nothing wrong with sort of playing around with the numbers and seeing what's happening. Okay, so I've established that's not the case. Then the other thing I've established is that uh, two, two n all factorial actually grows quite a bit larger, like quite a bit faster than just plain old n factorial. So that that might make me make me tend to think that this may converge, but it, it, this one is I I don't think is easy to see. So what I'm going to do now is uh, try the ratio test. Usually when I see the factorials, I go for this. Uh, uh, if I see see factorials, it, because they're hard, they're, they are harder to handle in some ways. Uh, we don't have, we for example, we can't, uh, we we don't know how to differentiate that, and etc. So uh, we, I, I often find that the ratio test uh, uh, works well on these. Okay, so let let me just do that then. I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of an plus 1 over an. Okay, and I see what that limit comes out to be. Okay, the limit as n goes to infinity of what is an plus 1? That is n plus 1 factorial squared divided by 2 
n plus 1 factorial. Okay, that is a n plus 1, and I'm going to divide that by a n, which is n factorial divided by 2 n factorial. It looks a bit nasty, but uh, let's see how we can uh, uh, simplify this. That's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to just expand this one out a little bit as I write it, and that's going to look like this then, n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. That's what it looks like when something is squared. And then underneath, I'm still going to have the 2n plus 1 factorial. Careful not to distribute that in because I just saw that that's not valid. Then I'm going to take this uh, denominator and I am going to uh, reciprocate it and put it, put it, uh, flip it upside down up here. Here we go. That's going to be 2n uh, factorial. And then here I have n factorial times n factorial. So just to, to be absolutely clear what I just did there, I, I used the ab divided by c over d is equal to uh, ad over bc. Well, things are looking uh, uh, not not too bad. I I can cancel uh, some things out here fairly easily. So now I'm looking at this uh, n plus one factorial here divided by this uh, n uh, factorial here. Let's see, I'm going to try to simplify some some things here. So that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. And I'm looking at the um, n plus 1 factorial divided by the n factorial, and then that is simply n plus 1. So that is, and then I look at the next one, same thing, n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial, I get another n plus 1. And then I'm looking uh, at the last two things I've got sitting there. Maybe I'll uh, go to a black here. I'm, I've got two other terms here. I've got this one and this one. So I am going to write that like this, uh, 2n factorial, no change there. And then I'm going to expand the denominator into so it looks like this, 2n plus 2 factorial. Uh, then I see that this one is simply 2 more than this one. So I can write this like this, the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 times n plus 1, and then the, this division here becomes 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. Okay. So I just want to put something on the side here to hopefully make this clear. 2n plus 2 factorial looks like this. 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 uh, times 2n times, move over, uh, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2, etc., etc., until I get down to 1. And then I'm going to chop this right here and say, but, but you know what this is? This is 2n factorial. That's how that division has happened. Okay, now I've got uh, an expression of uh, two polynomials. In fact, I can see immediately what this limit is. It is a quadratic polynomial in the numerator of degree 2, quadratic, and I've got a quadratic polynomial in the denominator, degree 2, and I can then write the limit here as the uh, ratio of the leading coefficients of those two polynomials. In the numerator, that uh, the coefficient on n squared is 1, and in the denominator, the coefficient on n squared is 4. That is less than 1. Therefore, this thing converges by the ratio test. Okay, I keep going here to do some more. Next question here: What if my what if my uh, values in my infinite series is arctan n plus 1 minus arctan n. This off the top looks harder than, in fact, I think many of the ones uh, uh, that we've seen. So I will say a couple things about this. And there's, there's, there's two methods that we can we can take a look at here. Uh, one, I, I, I will tell you, you could uh, try uh, 
uh, telescoping series, you see that get, you might get that idea uh, from that minus sign. Can you see, okay, so I'm going to have sort of when n is 1, I'm going to have this minus this, and then when n is the next value of n, here, let me let me try to make this more clear. I, I'm thinking like this, if I just write out the first few terms, I would I would have arc tangent, arc tangent, when n is 1, I would have arc tangent of 2 minus arc tangent of 1, that is uh, when n is 1, and then when n is 2, I would have arc tangent of 3 minus arc tangent of 2. And then, this, so this is uh, n equals 1. I'm just writing out uh, the first few terms of the series. This is when n equals 2. And then when n is equal to 3, I have uh, arctan 4 uh, minus arctan uh, 3. And, and I, I see what is happening here. This is going to cancel with this. This is going to cancel with this, and so it looks like many, many things will uh, cancel out. So I would, I, I then see the idea of a uh, tele telescoping series. That's one option. Uh, the other option, uh, so that's a telescoping, telescoping, telescoping series. The other option would be uh, to use the uh, integral test. I, I'm going to do that one because it's, it's. Um, perhaps not super easy to integrate and uh, see what's happening. I'm going to actually go down to the bottom and do this one uh, via the integral test. Uh, let me just uh, go down a ways here. Uh, I'll, I'm going to ask you to consider this here. Consider the integral. The integral from 1 to infinity of arctan x plus 1 dx minus the integral of arctan x dx. This is sort of give a bit of a review of how to find the integral of the arc tangent function, and uh, you can do that by parts. Uh, by parts, so that is going to make uh, u equal to arc tangent of x and dv equal to dx. Then uh, v will be equal to x and du will be 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So I'm, I'm doing integration by parts, and then I have an improper integral, uh, improper of uh, type uh, 1, because of that limit of integration there. So uh, I mean, some sense from a, uh, from our perspective, maybe a, of an exam question, this actually uh, brings together a large number of uh, skills that we've learned through the course. So integration by parts, improper integral, series convergence, all all in one question. Okay, so uh, please, uh, now that you see what to do, you should be able to uh, do both of these integrals uh, by parts. And uh, let me just move ahead a few steps that would then is going to be the limit as t goes to infinity and I will have this thing here x plus 1 uh, arc tangent of x plus 1 minus 1 half log uh, x plus 1 squared plus 1 that's coming from the uh, first integral and then minus x arc tangent of x minus one half log x squared plus one uh, coming from the second integral and the entire thing is uh, evaluated at one and t and then t is going to uh, approach infinity so when i did this please check my uh, my arithmetic here i, I there, there's possible that there's a a problem, but this is the this is what I got when I did this: uh, three pi by four plus one quarter log uh, twenty-five over four minus eight times the arc tangent of two. A anyway, regardless, uh, uh, it, this comes out to something that is finite. Okay, so then we've got um, our function f of x is uh, continuous. Uh, positive, uh, decreasing, uh, uh, convergent, uh, series converges. Okay, so we use the uh, 
we use the integral test. We also could use a telescoping series test. That one's a that's a that's a fairly uh, that's a fairly tricky tricky one. Okay, next uh, next one along. I mean, this is almost the same as the problem we just did on the previous uh, 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 page, and that is looking at this thing here. It, well, maybe not quite as uh, not as, as quite as good, but let's let's look at the absolute uh, the value here. We've got uh, uh, we've got an alternating series, but I'm going to look for so I'm going to check for check for absolute convergence. Okay, so I I'll take a look at that. That would then be I would be then looking at this series here when I've taken the absolute value. 3 over pi to the n. Pi is bigger than 3. So it's a geometric series. Uh, it's geometric uh, r, which is equal to uh, 3 over pi less than 1, converges. Okay, so it converges absolutely, For so therefore it, it converges. <clears throat> All right, this one here I'm not going to do. Uh, take a look at the one we just did on the previous page, spring. 2002 I, I, I. it's almost exactly the same I think the lot that, that before we had a square root there but there's really no difference in the in the reasoning so uh, perhaps even use that one now you've seen it uh, already uh, uh, try uh, try again okay uh, let's take a look here okay this is more of a, a slightly more of a conceptual question it's saying what happens what it's, tell us about the convergence of one over n to the p. So if, if, if you see something like this on an exam, you want to evaluate for all of the values of p that you need to in order to make a statement that's true for all values of p. So uh, for, for sure, if, uh, let's see, if p is zero, I'm just sort of thinking now, like, if p is equal to zero, then, um, or, for that matter, uh, p is less than zero, uh, then the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the p is not zero, and that's going to be diverges by the test for divergence. Okay, it's not a good idea just to say oh, this converges for uh, a p greater than one. I, I, you, no doubt you probably know the answer, but but if you're being asked this kind of a question specifically, one doesn't want you to just write down the result uh, out of your head. You want to uh, explain why the the basically the p series tests work. So we got the uh, uh, first one diverges uh, by uh, test for divergence. Okay, so we're there. Now we have to. Uh, be uh, careful with if p is greater than if p is greater than zero, then we use the integral test. So then use integral test. Okay. Okay, and that's going to be with this this function here, one over x to the p, and that uh, is continuous, positive, and decreasing for x greater than zero. So we can go ahead with the integral test. Now we take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p, and that is going to be equal to the limit as t goes to infinity of x to the minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p evaluated at 1 and t. Okay, And then we can take a look at this limit, and this limit uh, converges for p greater than 1 and diverges for p less than or equal to 1. So now we can make a statement basically that this thing is convergent for values of p greater than 1 only. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Uh, here, next one. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, when, when n is really, really large, this thing is, is, is going to be pretty much a non-entity. And then I'm seeing 1 over the square root of n squared, which looks pretty much like 1 over n. So I'm guessing that this thing is going to diverge because I remember, I will always remember <laughs> that the harmonic series diverges. So I'm guessing that this diverges. And uh, one way of showing that would be the limit uh, 
uh, comparison test. So let's just take a look at that using the limit comparison test. I'm going to take the limit as uh, n goes to infinity, and I'm going to compare 1 over n with 1 over square root of n squared plus 1. Well, then that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of square root n squared plus 1 divided by n, and that that limit is going to be 1. 1 is greater than 0. Uh, so what does that tell me? That means when I look at these two series I've compared, they either both diverge or they both converge. And I, I know that uh, 1 over n diverges. Uh, therefore, 1 over square root n squared plus 1 diverges. Okay, limit comparison test. Okay, next question. I'm going to do exactly this, basically exactly the same strategy. I'm looking at this thing here. I, I think uh, this one is not making too much difference. Let me take a look at what this looks like. 1 over 2 n squared to the 2 thirds. Let me just... Uh, like that'll be 1 over 2 to the 2 thirds times, let's see, that'll be n to the 4 thirds. Like, who, I, I don't really care about this number. That's not going to make any difference at all. And so I'm seeing n to the 4 thirds, and I, that is a convergent p series test because 4 thirds is greater than 1. 4 thirds greater than 1. So then it, it would uh, sort of immediately immediately occur to me to use the same test I did in the previous example, the, the limit comparison test, and compare it to uh, 1 over n to the 4 thirds. Okay, Let's try that out. So take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the 4 thirds versus the one we actually are wanting to show here, 1 over 2n squared plus 1 to the two-thirds. Okay. So use a limit comparison test and uh, you will find that this thing converges. Okay, next question. I'm looking at this one. It's maybe not quite as straightforward as the last two. However, 3 to the n grows much, much faster than n. I mean, uh, just thinking of it graphically, uh, and if I draw a graph of what y equals x looks like, it looks like that. That is y equals x. And then I look at what does y equals 3 to the x look like. Well, 3 to the 0 is 1. Um, 3 to 0 is 1. So it's here. And then it just zooms up at high speed. Okay, so the, the, this, the, 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 uh, the first term there grows much more quickly. So I then think to myself, maybe I can compare with this. So I'm getting a sense that look at this, this infinite series. And then that's equal to, I mean, I'll just combine those two numbers, 2 thirds to the n. That uh, converges, it's a geometric series. So that's convergent. So then again, I would use the um, limit comparison test. A lot of the speed that you can get uh, with doing these and going in the right direction comes from being able to look at it and get a sense of what's going on before you start to do something. You can't, I cannot encourage you strongly enough to look at the series and say to yourself, okay, I'm looking at it, I'm doing a bit of analysis, I think it converges. And if you afterwards find out you're wrong, no problem, you will learn something or, or you think that it diverges, whatever, but, but make, a, make a judgment before you start to do too much analysis. So this uh, converges by the limit comparison test. All right, continuing on. There's only so many of these I can do in one lecture, and uh, I'm 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 
wanting, of course, you to practice as uh, much as possible. So I am now at this point for these ones here, I am simply going to state the method that I used and what the result is. That will allow you to try on your own. Uh, see if you can use the method that I did, see if you can come up with the result, and also think to yourself, maybe is there another method that I could use? Because oftentimes there is more than uh, uh, one method that will work. So this one here, convergent. Uh, I compare uh, with this one. Okay, convergent compare with that. Uh, this is a divergent test for divergence. Next one, uh, convergent. I see the factorial here. Immediate clue, use the ratio test. Next one looks a bit complicated. Or I've got an arc tangent sitting here, but uh, I attempt not to get afraid when I see that, and I'm because the arc tangent is bounded above by pi by two. Okay, so that that's a nice a nice thing when something is bounded above, you can often often sort of uh, get rid of it. So I uh, would then uh, compare with one over n to the two thirds. Sorry, not to the two thirds, what am I saying? To the three halves. Uh, this one here, this one also looks maybe a little bit complicated. We have something, uh, this is getting uh, smaller and smaller and approaching one. And I see, those, I see this nth power like this, and that sort of leads me to think maybe the root test might work well because when I take an nth root of something to the nth power that uh, nicely cancels out so I'm I'm thinking uh, try out the root test and indeed when you do that you will see that this is convergent root test okay some more here hmm uh, this one here I see it's alternating uh, so I would immediately uh, try the, I could also see uh, just looking at it that uh, the terms are going to zero. So I would immediately be thinking of trying the alternating series test. This one's kind of interesting. Uh, it's not absolute convergent though. It's, it's conditionally convergent. Okay, so, so note, uh, not absolutely convergent. What do I mean by that? Well, it means that this thing diverges. If it wasn't for if it if the terms were not alternating, the thing diverges. This diverges. Okay. <clears throat> Next one. Uh, I'm looking. It's n. Uh, so I look at this. I see. I see n over the square root of n to the fifth. That. What does that look like? That looks like uh, uh, one over n to the five halves minus one, five halves minus one bigger than one. So I'm guessing that this converges, uh, absolutely in fact, because I didn't even factor in the fact that it's alternating when I made this analysis. So it's, I, I would, I would I'm, I'm, it is the case, it's absolutely convergent. And uh, I could uh, use a limit comparison test. This little four here, I can, I, that's hard, hardly relevant when n gets large, so I'm, I'm thinking it's absolutely convergent, and I then, based on that analysis, I would use the limit comparison test uh, with 1 over n to the 3 halves. Next one, look at this. I see a polynomial in the denominator. I see an exponential in the numerator uh, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm like this is not this is not this is not going to this is not going to converge the numerator is getting bigger more quickly than the denominator so it I would immediately guess that it's divergent it is is indeed the case and so this is divergent and then I would show that uh, with the uh, test for divergence next one let's take a look at this one uh, 
let's see, I see uh, 5 to the n here, but then I see uh, 9 to the n here, and I see this, this, this thing would kind of almost cancel out. Uh, so there's a variety of different ways you could go here. You could, uh, you could try the uh, uh, limit comparison test. Uh, you could also do the uh, ratio test. So it's, you, you, that would show that this is in fact absolutely convergent. So therefore it's uh, convergent when it's alternating as well. So it's absolutely convergent um, by the ratio test. Okay, look at this one here. Uh, <laughs> basically, one in the numerator and a large power in the denominator. Almost, you know, right away you should be thinking, okay, convergent for sure. But uh, so, I mean, it is absolutely convergent. Uh, so there's a couple of ways maybe you could uh, do this. Probably more than a couple of ways. Actually, one way would be to uh, use the integral test. We haven't used that one as much in these examples. We could do that. Uh, we could compare. Uh, we could compare with uh, one over n to the five. Uh, we could use the uh, ratio test. Well, three different ways you could do show that that one's absolutely convergent. But I mean that should spring into your head right away. One over n to the fifth. Basically, you're going to be suspecting convergence here. Looks like what does this look like? Basically, it looks like 1 over n squared. I'm thinking it's going to converge. Indeed, you can show that by um, compare compare with uh, 1 over n squared. That would be one way. Uh, you could if you wanted to, although <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but just so you see that there's many uh, different methods. This is more time consuming. You could compare it with 1 over n squared or, or to practice, maybe, uh, you could uh, use a partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition, and uh, and write as a telescoping series. Okay, so you want to have all the tools uh, available, and then. Also, you want to be good at selecting uh, which tool to use so that you don't waste a lot of your time, particularly in an examination situation. So I will, I will give an example uh, how I sometimes see, uh, sometimes students will ask me, oh, I, 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 how could I possibly do these questions? I, I ran out of time. I don't have enough time to do the questions. And, and so what I sometimes see is, is the analogy, the, uh, let me use this as an analogy. Here's, here's building A and here's building B and it, during the test we ask you to walk from building A to building B and if you kind of walk you know roughly like this there's a variety of maybe different paths you can get there like that but you, you go like that you pretty much have enough time uh, on the exam to do it if however you decide to walk like this I mean it does work right there we are now we arrived at B then once you do that on a couple of the questions it, it, you do uh, run out of time so part of practicing is not just about learning how to uh, make it from A to B but it's learning how to see how to choose these shorter paths and that will that will give you a lot of uh, speed increase uh, when you're in an examination situation okay this last one here uh, let's let's look at it it looks like I see n to the 4 here and then I basically see n to the 6 here so I, I it looks it, it, I, I thinking right off the top looks like uh, 1 over n squared so I'm gonna guess that it converges and it, indeed it does so you can show that uh, by uh, comparing compare with 1 over n squared so that that limit comparison test, obviously, uh, you've, you've seen it just come up a whole bunch of times. It's uh, it's extremely useful. Okay, here's here's one uh, looking a little bit more tricky. Uh, we see we know that one over. So here's looking at this one. The thought process might fall along these lines. This one diverges. This one converges. And what happens? Uh, when we have this log function growing very slowly uh, and then that and not only that we have that squared so this is uh, not so easy to make uh, an assessment of off the top but uh, I will tell you uh, it does in fact converge and perhaps trying the integral test okay 
and why am I thinking the what one one thing of why does the integral test come into my into my head because I if I'm going to use the integral test I'm going to need to be able to integrate the the uh, analogous function so I'm thinking of uh, before I sort of would start on that I, I into my head becomes this thing here and I'm thinking will this be reasonable to integrate or not so that's what I'm thinking before I start down this path because I don't want to concoct for myself an integral that is uh, completely desperate. So I'm, I'm wondering when I do that, I think, oh yeah, look at that. If I make that substitution u equals log x, then du will be 1 over x dx. And so this will be a not, not difficult to integrate. So that makes this a, a, a very uh, plausible thing to do. Okay. All right, final one here. Uh, what is this? What are we looking at here? Uh, we see uh, an exponential in the denominator that's growing fast, and then we see a factorial in the numerator. So then the question is, which one grows faster, actually, a factorial or an exponential uh, uh, function? So let us just actually, before we, just as an aside here, uh, so who is faster? Who is faster? <laughs> Factorial or exponential? Okay, so just as a sort of uh, way of thinking about this, again, just using some numbers and playing around with them. So let's just compare. Let's just compare growth of. Uh, let us just pick one. It doesn't matter what the base of the exponent is. Let's just pick four. Let's compare the growth of four to the n with n factorial. So we're just going to actually just look at a few of them. So let's like look at when n is 1. Okay, let, uh, let me concoct a, a table here. Uh, we're going to have n like that. And then we're going to have, uh, uh, maybe I'll make it a little bigger so I have space. I, I'm going to have here 4 to the n. And then, and then I'm going to have uh, over here uh, n factorial. I'm just going to just get a sense of what's going on and then see if I can... Uh, uh, see which one grows faster because then I'll, I'll be able to get a sense of whether I think this thing will converge or diverge because if the factorial grows faster I'm going to guess it diverges if the factorial grows slower then I'm going to guess it converges so I'm going to take a look uh, here and I've got uh, when n is 1 4 to the, that, this would then be 4 to the 1 and that's equal to 4 and then over here this would be um, uh, 1 factorial and that's 0 and then when n is 2 I'm going to have here 4 squared, and that's going to look like 4 times 4. And over here, I'm going to have 2 factorial, and that's going to look like, um, sorry, this is not 0, this is 1. That's going to look like this, 2 times 1. Then I'm going to have n is equal to 3, and I'm going to have 4 cubed, and that's going to be 4 times 4 times 4. And then this is going to be 3 factorial, that's going to be 3 times 2 times 1. And when n is 4, I'm going to have 4 to the 4, and that's going to be 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And then over here, 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then when n is 5, you only have to do this maybe once or twice in your life, <clears throat> and then you'll rec re remember the uh, result, or you can easily regenerate it anyhow. So I'm, I'm there's 5 of them now. And then 5 factorial is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I'm just going to do a couple of more, and then I'm going to draw the what I hope is the obvious conclusion. 4 to the 6, that's going to be, there's going to be 6 of them here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then when this is 7, there's going to be 7 of them there. And 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7. And then this is going to be 6 factorial. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 7 factorial, uh, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, now I'm looking at this, and in each of the cases uh, uh, here, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so let us just say, well, in fact, starting here, I, I, I always here have 5, I have here 4 things multiplied together, 5 things multiplied together, 6 things multiplied seven things, and they're all fours. Here I have four things multiplied together, five things multiplied, six things multiplied, seven things multiplied together. 
So, so at first, this thing is uh, is bigger, right? I mean, four times four times four times four is bigger than four times three times two times one. But starting here, you see what happens. These ones are, whoops, these ones here are, uh, I guess these ones are smaller. This one is the same size, and then this one is bigger. Similarity here, these the, these ones are still smaller. This one is the same size, and these two are bigger. And then these three are the smaller. This one is the same size. And now these three are bigger. And so you can see what's happening is uh, after not a very long period of time, when, when the product of these three is bigger than the product of four times four times four, then uh, the factorial will, will outstrip the exponential function. So the factorial grows faster. So then I, using that uh, insight from below, I'm going to guess that this thing diverges and it indeed it does and you could use the uh, test uh, for divergence uh, on that or perhaps you could use uh, seeing that uh, the factorials major clue you could use the ratio test okay so a whole bunch of uh, practice uh, on uh, determining whether an infinite series converges or diverges and that is uh, all for now thank you bye-bye